tall story about a fictitious dishy Brisbane top chef. A pot G cooking pot. I opened a pot and what did I see? I saw a child's infinite snake toy looking at me. I poked around and what else did I find? Four beads and a Pandora bracelet. I concluded they could be made into fishing line weights. For what else did I find in the burnt bottom pot? A cookbook with dishes that included the Menindi toad in the hole. This cooking manual explained how to make Cherbourg porridge and Yeraba pancakes, too. Brisbane recipe was Musgrave Park homemade tomato sauce and beans on toast. How kind to have this Pandora pochi pot treasure. A simple South African cooking pot to be passed on to me. Old recipes that included Nan's and Grandad's favorite bush tucker recipes. There was a recipe for Uncle Mike's Warabinda Jump Buck Stew. Another recipe for Palm Island Upside Down Cake. Or even a simple Brisbane chef's recipe, curried sausage casserole. Oh goody, this was my dad Johnny's favorite dessert. Rice pudding and also mum's favorite, bread and butter pudding. With sultana bread and jam. Even Kempsey Milkshake Spider, not to forget the Kempsey Coconut and Chicken Curry Main, served on a bed of steamed rice. Quick, rush out and buy some bread, some eggs, oats, to make some porridge, rice and honey, and lastly, don't forget the brown sugar. Make up some powdered milk, and bring home some oranges to squeeze on the pancakes with brown sugar. That, unlike the Mungindi orange, don't stop in the middle of the road, as the Magindi orange ran out of juice. You can use lemon or orange juice on top of pancakes and sprinkle sugar as the last afterthought before you eat them up. Don't forget to be like a boomerang and come back quick. A wooden cooking spoon, put that on your list. Love you, Ma. Love you, Pa. Come back safe and be mindful of the traffic, as these days they peddle junk food for the folks that are on the move. For cooking with this black potgy pot means an open campfire. Old newspapers are ripped up and burned. Some marshmallows on a stick wouldn't go astray. However, I think twice these days as being scolded by a hot candy. Or a hot fire. Or a spitting cook pot is nasty and wrong. Campers beware as fires don't include any safety manual on cooking hazards. As people can run around and bump into the fire, it's scary for some. And last time, I wasn't that tough. When I stood on a hot ash that had flown out of the fire. Mum kissed my foot better, but now I am bigger and it means not forgetting to keep wearing my shoes. Can you put that on the list too? Some lemons to make lemonade too. Peddling healthy options is currently in Australian constitution practice. Community announcements come and go. And family ties are the basis for our potchy cooking pot to teach young ones to do home chores. You can also put the brown onions on the list, as someone's uncle may be visiting tonight or tomorrow. Potatoes, tomatoes in a can, carrots, and some greens could come in handy, as I love making stew. Some bully beef or country lamb adds to the flavors of an outback dish. Lentils and barley sometimes add to a main meal, especially when making Calgary ham and pea soup. Some daily protein is good. Even some vegetables give us our daily roughage. Vitamins and minerals are good for our bones, nails, and hair. And we need these nutrients in our diet to feel good. Less on the sugary lollies and fatty fast foods. As diabetes is a tough illness, and understanding what causes it is sometimes part of the prevention cure, that eating takeaway foods can affect your long-term health. My dad's a fan of shopping with brown canvas bags. Environment friendly is a green movement. My family's healthy eating habits include cooking with brown or raw sugar and unbleached flour, less on the salt and butter, and more on cooking with this potchy cooking pot. That could serve my generations of family well. Or using the pot G lid as a fry pan is cool too, to sometimes use. My family rules in the kitchen as our community is a joy to be in. For men, women make real good cooks too, and so do some children, and also some of the elders, who set the framework for our community and need to watch their own health. 
who take the initiative and send in ATC recipes for other families to learn to cook, and pass on the wooden spoon if you don't have a potgy cooking pot. We like adding to MTC collector cards, as recipes are cool when you use four or five, six or seven ingredients. That good old recipes can be rehashed and printed on a material called plastic, indestructible stock, ordered and distributed by MTC. No material that is printed on is ever indestructible, so remember to keep your cards in a safe and clean place. And soak your pots and dishes after every meal. To kick it all off, in November 2011, a story can be narrated to tell of a fictitious Brisbane fine butchery store. The owner, a chef with 25 years' experience, has written these dishes. Eleven top MTC recipe cards by a top Brisbane chef. 1. Cherbourg porridge. 2. Yeraba pancakes. 3. Musgrave Park homemade tomato sauce and beans on toast. 4. Uncle Mike's Warabinda jump buck stew. 5. Palm Island upside down cake. 6. Johnny's rice pudding. 7. Mum's choice bread and butter pudding with sultana bread and jam. 8. Kempsey coconut and chicken curry with a bed of rice. Side drink, Kempsey Milkshake Spider. 9. Chef's Special Brisbane Curried Sausage Casserole. 10. Kalgoorlie Ham and Pea Soup. 11. Mungindi Toad in the Hole. A mix of spices and ingredients can be packaged in a sealed tight bag, put together to send up North Queensland or lower down in NSW, or any community connected to Australian Postal Service. A keen hope for a community-minded program when ordering from such. Possibly an Aboriginal company selling retail table salt from established Salt Lake quarries. That added bonus of nutrients like the Himalayan Mountains Pink Rock Salt Kanga program. To deliver stored items to potential repeat buyers. A shipment of quality ingredients can be sent in the mail. You can buy in bulk and order lots of little bags of beef jerky. Just go online and enter this URL, mungindytradingcards.com. Packets of items and bags of unprocessed flour can be arranged to deliver a consignment of Aussie foods. Kanga mail will arrive after receiving a Kanga food box. It's never enough to be proud to be an Australian. Our produce is some of the finest in the global community. Thinking big is a fine motive of a Brisbane fictitious top chef allowing copies of his ATC recipe cards. Small notes of wisdom for consumers to read, who can be cooks and chefs from many different homes, all over our precious globe, Earth. In this reality, an Australian MTC annual challenge is to be offered. An annual roster of recipes, in which meals are cooked in the black potgy pots, MTC talks about the pots being called Pandora pots, for the word Pandora makes reference to treasure. Thus the pots are valuable, therefore. A little taste of booty treasure. Just bring your spoon. And pour in some of the ladled dished out food. Yum, yum, yum. The end. P.S. Thanks, chef. Thanks, cooks. Listen to this Wikipedia article. How cool is this online free information site? Here is an article about the Pachi Pot's origins. South Africa, Pachi Coast literally translated, small pot food, is a stew prepared outdoors in a traditional round, cast iron, three-legged pot, the Pachi, which is found in the homes and villages of people throughout Southern Africa. The pot is heated efficiently using small amounts of wood, charcoal, or, if fuel is scarce, twisted grass or even dried animal dung. History. Traditionally, the recipe includes meat, vegetables, starches like rice or potatoes, all slow-cooked with Dutch Malay spices, the distinctive spicing of South Africa's early culinary melting pot. Other common ingredients include fruits and flour-based products like pasta. Pachikos originated with the Vortrekkers, evolving as a stew made of venison and vegetables, if available cooked in the potgy. As trekkers, pioneers, shot wild game, it was added to the pot. 
the large bones were included to thicken the stew. Each day when the wagon stopped, the pot was placed over a fire to simmer. New bones replaced old, and fresh meat replaced meat eaten. Game included venison, poultry, such as guinea fowl, warthog, bush pig, rabbit, and hare. Today there are numerous recipe books and pachico chefs, each with their own secret ingredients for pachicos. Several annual pachicos competitions are held. Ingredients and general process and improvised potji. The potji, with a bit of cooking oil inside, is placed on a fire until the oil has been sufficiently heated. Meat is added first, depending on the preference of the cook. This can be anything from lamb or pork to biltong. The meat is spiced and often a form of alcohol is added to flavor, mostly beer, old brown sherry, or a dessert wine like humbro. When the meat is lightly browned, vegetables like potatoes and mylies, corn, are added, along with whatever spices are needed. Water or other liquids may or may not be added, depending on the views of the potji chef. The lid is then closed and the contents left to simmer slowly without stirring. This distinguishes a potji coast from a stew that is stirred. The aim is that the flavors of the different ingredients mix as little as possible. Although some chefs may permit stirring from time to time, it does create a stew where all the ingredients tend to taste similar. Little sauce or water is used, so that cooking is by steam and not boiling in a sauce like a stew. Thus, the heat must be very low and constant. These are some of the secrets of each cook. A potji is a social activity, with guests generally engaging in fireside chattage, while the potji cooks typically three to six hours. A potji is usually accompanied by rice, pasta, or something similar.